<clears throat> yeah, UVA won the national championship. Evil triangles. That's just wrong. I mean, just come on, just bring on the four horsemen in the pocket. Let's just call it a day or whatever. Just you know, let's let's have the big one to let California float off into the ocean. Tony Bennett seems like a nice guy. Huh? Tony Bennett <laughs> seems like a nice guy. The singer? No, no, the coach. What coach? <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, remember, I'm old, okay? Uh, and, and UVA is like evil, and I want like this. I, I, I know very little about UVA because they're evil. And old. So, the, so the coach is a nice guy? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Okay, really nice. <laughs> you have it. You have a good person rowing the oars for a ship of evil. That's just okay. I'm, I'm like I'm not quite sure how I feel about that one, but he's probably there against this will. That's that, that, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. he's getting a fat bonus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, anyway, uh, sorry everybody on the internet, but it just, UVA's basketball national champions. Anyway, so, <laughs> while we're on the subject of depression, let's talk about uh, <laughs> poverty. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so, what we're getting to here is Transfer payments. What's transfer? Well, it's just in general. Uh, or moving from something to something. In this case, transfer payments, the same thing is giving money. It's transferring money from one person to another. And the government has these transfer payments, transfer programs in place. We have two different kinds, social insurance and then anti-poverty programs that are all about transferring money from one person to another. Does it fundamentally, and I've got this on slides here, but it doesn't fundamentally, it doesn't grow the economy, it just changes what's going on in the economy. And so we're going to be looking at these for the next, well, today, and then when we got some calls, and then, okay, so we'll, We'll get this one knocked out, and then the next one's aging and healthcare, the next two modules. So, like, we're getting into some social issues here. But the transfer payments ultimately are a payment given to somebody where no goods and services are exchanged. You get the benefit without having to do anything in return. Examples Social Security. What do you have to do? You got to get old, right? And then once you get old, they send you a check. Your grandma's getting your social security check, right? We're going to get old enough to your grandma's getting social security check. My grandkids aren't old enough for them. But, okay, grandma's getting your social security check. Is grandma got to, like, any, like, go to work? Now she's getting checked. Great grandma, for those of you who see how so young. They get the social security check. They don't have to go to work. Or they don't have to, like, you know, welfare. You know, poor people. Yeah, they're getting assistance, they're getting money and other benefits, and they don't have to do anything for her. They just receive the benefits. Medicare, Medicaid, that's health care. We'll get into the more details on each of these as we go. We have two kinds of transfers. Question on a test. Name the two kinds of transfers. In hint, wink, wink, no judge. Number one is a cash transfer, and number two is in kind that we'll talk about on the next slide. But a cash transfer, what is the person getting? Cash. They're getting money that they can do whatever with. The money is intended to help them in certain areas, but whether they spend it that way or not, that's up to the recipient. Social Security. Grandma gets, well, you speak, she got a check. But now she's getting, either she's got a, like a debit card thing, they automatically put the money on, kind of thing. Or they can do direct deposit into grandma's checking account kind of thing. But she's getting cash. And she can, she's supposed to spend it on what? Food, Food clothing, shelter, that kind of, you know, the basics. We'll talk about it a little later. But she could spend it all on smack, right? Lottery tickets and heroin. Yeah, you know, I mean, grandma can she spend it on whatever she wants. That, that, that's smack. She can spend it on uh, whatever she wants to. 
But, you know, it's intended for her to cover her expenses for food, clothing, and shelter. Disability. If you're disabled, you can't work anymore, or you get checks to help cover the paychecks that you can't get anymore because you can't work anymore. Here's a little secret, this, which we'll talk about slightly later, so it's going to be secret. Disability is part of the Social Security program. No. Unemployment insurance. You quit working, they send you a check to cover the paycheck. You're not getting disaster relief. Tornado comes, rips your house apart. They give you some money to help fix your house. They give you money. Where an in kind transfer, instead of cash, you're getting some kind of service. And it is something that you, the recipient, can't transfer to anybody else if either you use it for what it is or you don't use it. Um, okay, there's a slight asterisk on the second week. But food stamps. Food stamps, the way food stamps used to be is you, you got these coupons. Well, I'm going to call them coupons. They, they're like fake dollars. They're, say, U.S. Department of Agriculture, whatever, you make not pay whatever. You can only spend them in the store on certain items. Nowadays, you get the debit card type thing, and you swipe the card, you, you go through the grocery store and you buy the stuff on there and swipe the card and whatever that stuff is eligible eligible to be paid for out of this food stamp money is going to get paid for out of that and then anything left like whatever your harder oil and liquor and that kind of stuff you got to swipe your other card in order to pay for it um they used to have checks <coughs> they used to have checks too um not for food stamps they used to have trucks then we'll talk about when we get more into detail on these things. But it used to be y'all that too young, y'all that were back to trucks. That we talked about them a little bit last semester. Just you know, they would drive into the neighborhood. They had this surplus stuff, cheese and broccoli and milk and whatever, and whatever, you know, butter and that kind of stuff. And they would drive into the neighborhood and they got to flip over to the people who were deemed poor enough that they need food aid. And you came to the truck, and the truck, the person in the truck gave you a box of food. Instead of the government delivering the food in the back of a truck, the government's letting food line deliver the food in the back of their trucks, and you just go and pick it up with your little coupons, and you can get a little, a little bit more picky choosy looking if you hate peanut butter. You know, if you hate peanut butter, then you can get something else. Instead of getting a jar of peanut butter that you don't know what to do with, so you like take it home, you throw a little hole in the top, stick a firecracker in there, take up the whole light. <laughs> A, please send B, I resemble that comment. C, blue, red, long. Uh, just. Yeah, you know, no, I'm not going to tell that story. Okay, so, uh, food stamps. So, food stamps, you get food. And the food stamps are only used to give, get food. Yeah, you can take it. You used to, you could take your food stamp coupons, you could find somebody that's shady, and you give them $50 worth of food stamp coupons, then you give you $20 worth of cash, and you take that $20 real bill, go to the store and buy $20 worth of liquor, right? Kind of thing. But now it's a little bit harder because you've got the debit card, swipe card thing, thing. So you can't really go to your drug dealer, and your drug dealer pulls out the thing and swipes, whatever, right? So, and so it's sort of channeling if you getting food. Educational financial aid. They pay your tuition, right? They pay for your books. Two percent. Two percent. Two, three percent of the money. And well, it, it depends on how what kind of aid you're getting, if you're getting Pell Grants or that kind of stuff. But, but that's what you're paying. You're paying for your education. You can't, like, okay, I got financial aid and I don't want to come to school. I'm going to let my sister have it. I'm going to let my drug dealer have it. No, it is just for you. It's a service of education. And yeah, you get a little bit of cash at the end of that, but that's you help you pay for your gas and coming back and forth to campus kind of thing. So, you know, but basically, mostly, they're paying for your education, and education is what you're getting. Medicare, Medicaid, that's health care. You go to the hospital and you say, I'm on Medicaid, and they're going to treat you, and so the government's going to pay the bill instead of you. But you're not getting cash. You're getting treatment when you're sick. WIC, that's women and infant children. This is a special program where they deliver other stuff, specifically like milk diapers, that kind of thing, to low-income families that need milk and diapers for and formula for little kids. Um, and in housing aid, the government will help pay some of your rents for you. They don't give you the money for you to give to the landlord because they can't trust you because you're going to be right there with your grandma spending it all on cocaine and lottery tickets. So what happens is you've got an $800 a month rent on your apartment and the government you has decided you qualify for rent. 
help. So what they'll do is, okay, you rent say hundred dollars. Okay, landlord, we're gonna give you four hundred. So the person living there only has to pay the other four hundred. So that's not something you can transfer. It's something they help you get, help provide your housing, help provide your education, help provide you food. You're getting services, not cash. That's the difference. So question on the test: two types transfer, cash and kind. Uh, question on the test: give a couple of examples of cash transfer programs. Question on the test: give a couple of examples of any kind of transfers. Boom. And, and, and that's three questions on the test. I kind of promise you. I'm not going to answer this, but I just say traditionally, yeah, those are easy picking. <coughs> so, what do these work? Oh, um, I lost this where I transferred to Google slides from PowerPoint. Those numbers got lost in there somewhere. That, oh, I touched it that before. What class is this? Yeah, econ. Two. 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 Okay, so I broke something. Congratulations, welcome to my world. Um, the, the important ones Social Security. For all the transfer programs that the government does, and it's big, Social Security is 44% of the money they spend on those programs. Think of those programs that we just listed there, all of them on both of their slides. Social Security, 44%. Medicare, Medicaid combined ends up being another. 35 percent Medicaid, Medicare, which I've got it on a later slide. You got to be 65 and older to get it for disabled. Medicaid, that is health care for low income families. Where Medicare, old. Medicaid, low income. Uh, and Medicaid is a partnership between the states and the federal government. Generally, the fed, federal government. Covers about half of it, the states cover the other half of it, pull it together, whatever kind of thing. But the other stuff, we're talking four or five percent each. See how small these slices are. TANF, temporary age for needy families, that's what we consider, that's old school welfare. How that program has evolved is it, TANF. TANF is in here is probably about five percent, six percent. Educational financial aid is in here. Uh, SNAP. Wick, um, I might only blame you because I, that's why I have them on my slide. They were doing that until now. But all of those other programs are just small little slices. All the money for all, how? 90% of the people here South Side are getting financial aid. Just a few years ago, that was only like 50%. But still, but all the students all over wherever it is getting financial aid and all of that ends up only being like 2 to 3% of the pot. Housing aid is only like 2% of it. I'm trying to remember to dredge these numbers up in the back of my mind. But the bulk of it, two thirds of it, more than three, three quarters of it, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. That's where this money is going to. So when the Democrats are saying we've got increased spending on these programs, and they they're sitting there working on increasing little slices of pie to make these little slices of pie a little bit bigger. Not really going to have a big overall impact to the total pot, right? When the Republicans are saying we need to cut some of these programs, well, they're whittling away at some of these little things. Not going to have a profound impact on the overall size of the pie. Can the government do away with Social Security? No, nah, really. That one kind of it is what it is. Medicare. It is what it is because Medicare, there's no set. Well, this is how much we're going to pay. It's sort of the you know, when you're over 65, you know, this is what we did. 
you know, the, if we, we all turn 65 and all get sick, well, then they got to spend as much money. If we all turn 65 and we're healthy and stride, they ain't got to spend as much money because they cover what they cover. And they've got a menu of, for this procedure, this is how much we pay. For that procedure, this is how much we pay, and that kind of stuff. And a lot of doctors don't like dealing with Medicare because they don't get the money in Medicare, kind of, the government kind of drags their heels on actually paying, making payments. So that's why an interesting number of doctors' offices out there don't deal with Medicare. They say if you're Medicare patient, you need to go somewhere else. Doctors don't do that as much as dentists. They probably have the dentist office out there where they'll say we don't take Medicare. So it takes too long to pay. Because it takes too long and a little bit. I, want, I actually heard it yesterday. It seemed like Medicare only ends up paying about 60% of what you're supposed to be paying. The, num the number of flames. Because the, what happens is, like any good insurance company, they look for loopholes. And if the doctor or the, whoever at the front desk, if they put the wrong code in, they ain't paying. And if, you know, they just, and, and they've got a little specific codes about, you know, um, they just can go with dentists. You, you got a filling. Was it filling filled with metal? Was it filling filled with the ceramic stuff? Was it filling with the whatever the other composite is? Was it on front of the tooth, the side of the tooth, the back of the tooth, the top of the tooth, the bottom of the tooth? There's all these different things, and if you put the wrong one in there, they're going to say, uh, no, we're not going to pay you, because they're going to say, uh, you're not supposed to have metal on the front of your tooth, you're not supposed to have ceramic on the back of your teeth where nobody can see it, and those are more expensive, and so they'll sit there and any little red flag, like, so they, just, they, 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 they got you with the paperwork exactly correct, and then the government will pay, and it's confusing enough that that's why we have a program here at Southside. It's medical office assistant. I don't know what the final word is there. But we have anything with that's what they're teaching. Crystal Jones is teaching students about how to properly code stuff in the system. We have a whole program. It ain't just a class, it's a program for people to come to the to graduate to learn how to do this stuff. So you can ask all that they have to still pay sixty percent. Yes. But who pays the list? What the doctors have to eat it if they don't get your paperwork right. If you don't send me a bill, I ain't paying you. Yeah. And if they, you send me the wrong bill, I ain't paying you. If you send me the right bill and I'll pay you. You bill me for what it is that you're supposed to bill me for and I'll pay you. And that's the attitude the government has. Target efficiency. This is the percentage of income transfers that go to the intended recipients for the intended purposes. We know that there are people that are collecting welfare checks that shouldn't be. We know there are people collecting unemployment checks that shouldn't be. We know there are people collecting disability checks that shouldn't be. We know there are people that are doctors that are filing money, filing stuff with medic to Medicare for stuff that they didn't do, right? But the government has a balance. <laughs> Yo, there, there's some people like, Yo, okay, we've got to nail all of this fraud. If somebody, uh, Josie's collecting unemployment checks, and we think she's got a job, and so she's lying to us saying she doesn't have a job, so she can keep collecting unemployment checks as well as getting her paycheck on her other job. So we want to catch her. How much time, money, and energy would the government have to spend in order to try and catch her? I don't know. They'd have to send a couple federal agents to be coming down here. They'd have to be hacking into their computer and Facebook and that kind of stuff. Well, Facebook shares with everybody. But they'd be having a hack into their computer and social networking things. They'd have to be following her around or whatever, collecting the evidence. They'd have to be like actually sitting there with a camera or whatever, taking pictures of her going into the social uh, employment security commission, coming out holding a check in her hand with a smile on her face. They'd have to have pictures of her not just going to work, but actually working while she's at work and getting paid there and all that. How much money would they have to spend to do that? A whole lot. A whole lot.
compared to the how much money is she actually getting away with getting by cheating the system. So the government ultimately is like, yeah, she's getting a couple hundred dollars a week that she shouldn't be getting for the next couple months, because guess what? Those things expire after six months. So as long as she can be cheaply getting these checks in six months. So a couple hundred dollars a week for six months, that's, I don't know, $5,000. Can we do our homework, do our investigation and that kind of stuff and catch her for less than $5,000? The answer is no, the government's like, uh, well, it sucks. We know she's getting away with one, but there's nothing we can do about it. But they don't know the disturbance. That, 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 that's in general. This. Okay. You make sure the people, only people getting welfare, are people who are actually absolutely poor, namely their income is below the poverty line. How much investigation is the government going to have to do to verify everybody that comes in? Josie, congratulations, this is what you get for being sick. Oh, uh, sorry. This is the take on Josie, though. Because she's wearing a blue shirt that reminds me of UVA, even though she's got a fish on instead of still. Oh, so, um, no, Josie, congratulations. You're fine. Bobby has been using the word we in referring to UVA all day long. Bobby! He is coming and he's fine. He's coming to the office saying, I need you to collect welfare. I want my welfare checks. I don't have the money. <coughs> and the government can, you know, like, okay, prove it. So then the government would have to do all the investigation, <coughs> find out all the jobs, find out everything, find out the money that Bobby's grandmother's been giving him for Christmas, that guy's been that part of his income, right? But, Figure out, do the auditing, do all of this kind of stuff, follow him around to make sure he doesn't have other side jobs where he's mowing yards and that kind of stuff, get paid under the table and that kind of stuff. Um, find out, you know, he's taking home couches and carrying them up to Charlottesville for people set on fire after basketball games and all that kind of stuff. What all do they do anything like that? Okay. Uh, what all, what is all this social income? So the government's got that burden, but what about the burden on Bobby? Bobby's like, crap, I gotta do all of this stuff to prove to them that I'm whore. And the more difficult they have to do is like, oh, you know, we gotta get your, you've gotta get written, signed, written letters by four people verifying that you're broke, and you gotta give us bank records for the last six months, and employment pay stubs for the last six months, and all of it. What all kinds of, can Bobby handle that? So you may end up scaring away people that are, like, dude, I need the money, but it's too much work. And there is such a thing as too much work to get the reward. We have, side note, we have a faculty and staff rewards program here at college. And instead of it being like our bosses recognize people that do over and above and nominate the people that do over and above so they can get the reward, instead, we have to nominate ourselves and then the paperwork that we got to fill out is ridiculous just so the off chance of the two they're going to draw end up you know for all the applications they're going to pick two or three i'm like it ain't worth it because last year i ended up going through all of that hoops i thought i was up for the big prize but oh i was up for the little prize basically i got but then y'all know that little, little sun drop cup that i got in the one and just got a i got one of those like fake yeti cups when it's ten dollars, and I'm like, I spent I don't know two three hours filling out all this paperwork and all this justification. So you know, this is what I did. This is how I did it. Yada 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 yada. yada. And I get a cup, a ten dollar cup. Score. Then my wife ended up taking when she got when I got it home. So so this year, oh, they've been they've been sending out emails. You're not in uh, fact, he said you can nominate other people, but who's gonna nominate somebody else when I? I'm not gonna nominate somebody else if I gotta sit there and spend hours writing up all of this stuff. And then I gotta get, and the, whoever, somebody else nominated me, wrote up some stuff, but then they come to me, you've been nominated, show us the proof that you did what they said you did. I'm like, thanks. A couple of y'all that nominated me, I'm gonna poke you in the eyeball. Do it. Like, so, Ella, so nominations are out. I ain't nominating anybody, and I'm gonna refuse if some nomination comes across my desk, my name on it. 
it ain't worth it. And the last thing the government wants is for people to say, it ain't worth it. I'm poor. I'm hungry. My kids are hungry. But it's too much of a freaking hassle for me to do what I got to do in order to get the benefits. Uh, you're treating me like a criminal when all I am is just hungry. And so the government, I'm not going to say they play it fast and loose, but they know that then they can be a little bit, you know, and give the benefit of the doubt in this and don't prove really guilty, whatever. And it's like, okay, you come in and you say you're poor, and we're just going to say, you know, show us some paycheck stuff, let's see tax returns for the last couple of years, kind of thing. And okay, yeah, you need some help. And it, knowing that there are some people that are coming in playing games, lying, like Josie saying she's out of work when she really does have a job, and there's people that do get away with it. <coughs> but the question which is more expensive? To ferret out all of the people that cheating the system or put up with a few people cheating the system for the benefit of everybody else. Y'all have people that disappeared from this campus three weeks ago. Financial aid checks came through. And you notice the hallways are a little bit empty now. You've got a couple of extra empty seats in your classrooms now. Because the people got the money and they're gone. So the financial aid checks, what, a few hundred dollars? Maybe a thousand at the most. And then people have been trolling around the hallways for three months in order to get a thousand dollars. So go work for everything. <laughs> Easier, less stress, you can look yourself in the mirror and you make more money. But you know, we know there's people that are coming in here and aren't going to take us seriously and take the money and run. To try to weed those people out. You know, how hard would we have to make it to your life? In the process of making their lives so hard that they won't do it in the first place. So that's the whole thing target efficiency. We know that the system is getting broken. Then we know the system is getting abused, but it costs more. It would cost more to stamp out the abuse than it would to deal with the abuse. Not, not just fund money spent by the government, but the costs to society as a whole. The, the damage to the individual people. It's like, oh, uh, what if you're like, if, take this in a way that I mean it. Hispanic families down in like Texas and Arizona and that kind of stuff, they're tends to be, you know, they, well, even if they've been in America for a couple of generations and all, there is this tendency that, you know, yeah, there's a bunch of white guns out there. They're like, oh, you're asking, you must have done something wrong. Let's get you back over the border. So they're freaking paranoid. They don't want you admitting, they don't want to, even though they're American citizens, they don't want to answer the, the census. Because they're afraid that talking to the government about anything, about you just answering, you know, how many people live in a household, they're afraid that oh, they're not just here counting people, they're here trolling for people that they can kick out of the country. That level of paranoia there. So there is a fight going on now that there's constitutional challenge where the 2020 census comes up, they want to add one simple question to the end of it. Are you a U.S. citizen? And they're fighting it in the Supreme Court because the fear is if that question is going out there, there's a bunch of people that aren't going to answer. And even if they are a U.S. citizen, because they don't want to get involved, it's like, oh, so all the people that do say they're an American citizen, everybody else, well, they're in trouble. And just, or they're not going to believe me or what the left. That's not the point of the government. The government's job is not to be finding people and making their life miserable and kicking them out. The point of government, we'll talk about at the beginning of last semester, is to help the overall well-being of society. Help make, if you're going to do, if government's going to do anything, you should be doing things to make lives easier and better for people, not make them paranoid and scared and afraid to be answering questions and too scared to ask for the help that they rightfully deserve. So we know. There's problems, but the government's like, we got to take a little bit of abuse in order to keep from really screwing up a bunch of other people along the way. So, overall, these transfer programs fall into two categories social insurance. Think about insurance. What is insurance? 
in Jersey or something. Okay. You pay your money and then they do what? Charity or something. Yeah, which you buy charity is a lot. They protect you financially. If something happens, it's not your fault. If something happens, it's unexpected. That's good. Your car insurance covers you in case of an accident. What is an accident? You get in a wreck, it's not your fault. Uh, say, huh, I think my car could go through that tree. <laughs> ass, y'all. That ain't an accident, right? The insurance ain't gonna cover it. Health insurance. You get sick. How <coughs> many of y'all are like, hmm, I like to get sick. I'm gonna start looking at all the door handles in the campus before I leave here. Uh, in that, no, the insurance won't cover that. Uh, life insurance. Is in case you, I don't know, you die. How many of you are looking to die? You want to get You accidentally die the Insurance is cover, but it's to cover things that happen that are unexpected, that are out of your control. You didn't make it happen. That's why the life insurance, unless you pay extra, a life insurance policy won't pay if you commit suicide. Because you didn't die by accident. You died on purpose. And avoid the insurance to cover in case something happened that was unexpected. Well, you expected to die when you put the gun in your mouth, right? So you can, there are life insurance policies that have it in it. Well, what covers suicide as well, but you can end up paying the next 20% per month, every month for the coverage. So they're only going to pay you 20, yeah, 20% that you're paying for. Oh, no. They're just like you, because you know, they're like, well, we hope we don't miss suicide for the next eight years, and we get all this extra 20 from you month after month after month. But guess what? You got life insurance, you're going to die, right? So by committing suicide, you just sped up when they're going to pay, when they're going to have to pay you, right? And so uh, we're we're going to pay the money that we're going to pay anyway. We just got to pay sooner, so we're going to get that much more out of you in the meantime, or we're going to charge you the extra twenty percent, or whatever the money's going to end up in. But insurance, it is based on events. You get in a car wreck. You get sick. You get killed. You have a tooth fall out. You get dental insurance. Those are, you know, something happens. Something happens, and then you qualify for benefits. That is social insurance. Where the other is welfare, which is not driven by an event, it's driven by a circumstance. And what is that circumstance? You ain't got no money. Well, not you ain't got no money, but your income is below what the government says it should be. So, event happens. Or your, I'm gonna use the word poor, I mean, right? You don't have to be poor to collect to, to collect social, social insurance part right. You don't have to be poor to participate. An event doesn't have to, have to happen in order for you to collect welfare. Social insurance, as I said, they're event driven to reduce the consequences of a specific problem. For example, disaster insurance. Flood aid, the government has flood aid if people, you can get insurance, flood insurance from the government. If you live in an area where flooding happens and flooding happens, then the government will pay it to help you help pay for your expenses to clean up from the flood. Most of the income transfer programs we have actually are social insurance programs. Not uh, welfare. Think about those slices of pie. What were the biggest three slices of pie? Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. The biggest two of those? Medicare, Social Security. Social Security. You ain't got to be poor to collect Social Security. You just got to get old. That's the event. Medicare. You ain't got to be poor to collect it. You just got to be old. That's what it takes to collect. Those two alone were over 50%. Medicaid, that they were applied by 60%. Medicaid was the third one, and that was like, what, 12% of the time? And that is for welfare for the low income families to get health care. Right? But right off the bat, the big two are covering 60% of it, and then some of the others, like financial aid. It, it, the, your educational financial aid, that one kind of straddles the fence there, but how many of y'all are actually collecting food stamps, that kind of stuff? Okay, don't admit it. But, uh, no, I mean, I don't want you to admit it. But y'all are still getting <coughs> financial aid even though your income is above the poverty line. For a good chunk of you. 
Uh, so that one is sort of there, really stretching the social insurance welfare thing. Thing that one's really kind of a fuzzy in between. One. The social security, Medicare, or okay, I have it right here. You don't have to be poor to get them. They are not welfare programs. Over a trillion dollars worth of money is being spent in social insurance programs in the United States. I really need to double verify how big that number is now. I just got lazy and called it over a trillion. It was, exactly. it was barely over a trillion, and I just really haven't looked at the last couple of years. But then think about it. You know, like I said, some of y'all student loans. You get if your family is below the poverty line, yeah, you're gonna be getting Pell Grants pretty much you're getting a free ride. If your family is doing okay but not great, well, you'll qualify maybe for a little grant, but then the rest of it's a student loan. But the government will lend you the money and then you just pay them back later kind of thing. Because that's for relief. Okay, well, it helps you build mansions with all the trailer parks and everything in between. Very thing driven. Um, okay, now I get to the qualifications again a little bit. Of, I'm trying to remember. Generally, the point of these transfer programs is to change the distribution of income in a country and reducing poverty. That's ultimately it for welfare programs. To take people, take from people that have. And give to people that don't have. And it's not necessarily, you know, for social security insurance, it's not necessarily being poor or is the recipient. So it ain't quite Robin Hood. What did Robin Hood do? Take the rich and give the poor. But let's think about social security. Rich people get social security checks? Yeah. They qualify. Rich people get social school, uh, get Medicare? They qualify. Tornado comes through a rich neighborhood, do they qualify for disaster insurance? Yeah. But for those programs, what happens is like unemployment insurance. You know, you don't have to be living below the poverty line to lose your job, right? And qualify for an unemployment check. But those programs, you know, Social Security takes from young people, gives to old people. Insure, uh, unemployment insurance takes from workers, gives to people that aren't working, right? Medicare. Sort of taking from younger people, healthier people, and giving to older people, less healthy people, right? Well, then welfare is taking from people who have money and is giving it to people who don't have money or don't have as much money. So some of those transfers are directly about, yeah, you're poor and we're trying to lift you up. But then some of those transfers, you're transferring from one group to another group for other circumstances. That's what social insurance is. But ultimately, it's about changing who has the money. Slide for Ultimately, the transfer payments change the mix of production in the economy. Because we're shifting, taking money from young people, giving it to old people. Now old people have more money than they did before. Young people have less money than they did before. We're taking from healthy people and giving to sick people. Now the sick people have more money to work with, the healthy people have less money to work with. We're taking from workers and giving to people who don't have a job. So now those people have more money to work with and other people have less money to work with. So we're changing things. Because, okay, y'all are 18. Y'all are putting money into the Social Security Fund right now. And your grandma is taking money out of the Social Security Fund right now. If they were taking Social Security out of your check, what would you be doing with that extra money? Spending on what? Video games, peanut M&Ms, Sundrop. What's grandma in the pizza? You don't get to spend that money on video games, Sundrop, and M&Ms, right? So grandma's got that money. What's grandma spending that money on? Is she buying video games, Sundrop? Certainly not if she's diabetic, right? So what she spend on? Food and medicine, right? So because you're taking money out of your check and giving it to grandma, there's less video games and M&Ms being bought. There's more heart medication and personal scratch being bought, right? Whatever this grandma uses. So the mix of production in the country is different than it would be if we did not have these programs in the first place. Because financial aid, is, how many of y'all would not be in college if y'all could? 
is financial aid is not available to you. Okay, at least one of you is admitting to it, not as fine, the rest of you ain't got to raise your off. But just, yeah, we've got more college educated people in the country than we would if we didn't have financial aid. Just the, there would be like 10% of the local population around here having a college degree instead of like 40% that have a college degree in this area if it went for financial aid, helping a bunch of people to sell by. Housing subsidies lets people have bigger housing and maybe more housing than they would have had before. It's for people that couldn't get rental assistance or that kind of stuff, rent control, housing, and that kind of stuff, they be A, living in a smaller place, or B, living at home with their parents. Food stamps increase the amount of food consumption that people have. Because like I said, you can't really like take your debit card, food stamp debit card, and swipe it with your drug dealers, that kind of thing. So you pretty much kind of have to take it to the grocery store or buy groceries with it. Yeah, you can take some of the groceries and then trade it to your drug dealer, but okay. So here, let, let, let me give you this example. My wife is up looking. Somehow I get my hands on a hundred dollar bill. I ain't saying a word. First time I've had a binge drink in a long time. My son Joseph. Joseph. So we were like, okay, let's book it. We're gonna go to go to Walmart, go to the electronic section of Walmart, because we need the best buys from the Okay, so my plan, you know, I got a hundred dollar bill and Joseph's going with me, scales works, going to Walmart, we're going to lay down a hundred dollar bill, I'm headed through the electronics part. Joseph's like, uh, dad, what about me? Little black mayor. So I'm like, crap, so what am I going to do? I'm going to give him a 20. So I now have 80. So what's going to happen? I'm going to take my 80, I'm going to spend it in the electronics part, and he's going to take his 20 and spend it. Well, he's old enough, I guess he's going to electronics part. But my example is sort of falling apart now. My kids are getting older, but he, he's going to the toilet of this. And like he's young, he's going to go to the toy department. So what ended up happening? Before I gave him the 20, the Scales boys walked in with a $100 bill. The Scales boys were going to come out with $100 worth of stuff. Now what happened? I gave him a 20. I've got 80, but guess what? The Scales boys walk in the store with $100, and we're going to walk out the store with $100 worth of stuff. But instead of being $100 worth of electronics, it's $80 worth of electronics, $20 worth of toys. Right? So the economy didn't grow because we went from spending $100 to spending $100. So overall, the GDP, remember that one from especially 201 people, the GDP, the economy doesn't grow because nothing new is getting produced. Just they're selling less electronics, more toys. Because these programs exist, they're selling less video games, less MMs. Or heart medication, right? But overall, it's the same amount of spending. All with all this happened is when I'm walking in the door with a hundred dollar bill, I'm getting Joseph deciding power on where twenty of that gets spent. And that's what you and I are doing. We're letting somebody else spend some of our paycheck for us. That's how fantastic you are. You're being nice. You can let somebody else spend some of your paycheck for you. Somebody's grandma is spending some of your paycheck for you. You haven't even met her. That's how fantastic you are. Catch yourself on that. Give yourself a little love. Absolutely none of you do that. Don't let go on that. But, but, that, that, that's, but that's how these things work. The economy doesn't grow. We're just changing where it's getting bought. We're changing who's doing the spending decision, but the amount of spending doesn't change. <coughs> but we get those unintended consequences. There are people like Josie that are like, well, you know, okay, I get a job, but I've got I've got somebody, I know somebody that works for the Employment Security Commission, so they're gonna keep me on the thing and they're gonna do the paperwork for me. So I don't have to work 40 hours a week because I'm still getting to my unemployment checks. So I'm only work like they get my other unemployment check and then hey, I got extra time on my day to watch the duty store. We had somebody yesterday watching drug just to you doing some kind of drugs. Yeah, Noah was doing drugs and watching drugs. Drink now, he's drinking and watching drugs. Yes, yes. Uh, you're sitting where Noah was. That must have been what he did. No, he had a drinking problem. Came up in class. Oh, okay. So, you'll have people who are like, I don't have to work as much. Because I can abuse the system. What do you mean if I don't abuse the system? 
The fact that if you legitimately lose your love lean legitimately loses her job. Because the company shut down, not her fault. She's like, oh crap. But she's got her eight tentacle low child she has to raise. Right? Was that just most of the other love? Oh, it wasn't here. Oh, she got this eight tentacle look. Um, we, we were in that conversation with all the diapers if she needs that kind of. Well, so if unemployment wasn't an unemployment checks, were not an option, what would she do? She'd say, oh crap, if these programs didn't exist, she'd say, oh crap, and she would desperately have to take the first food line, Walmart, Burger King job that she could find. She's a lot smarter than that and a lot better worker than that, but she's got to take what she can get because she's got bills to pay. She's got diapers to pay. Seven of them per change. We already had that conversation, right? But because unemployment insurance programs do exist, if she loses her job today, she could go home and cry, but then tomorrow morning she could go down to the Employment Security Commission, fill out the paperwork, start getting the checks, start looking at the jobs, and she doesn't have to take the first thing that comes along. She's got time to wait and instead of taking Burger King, and then she's so busy working like a dog at Burger King that she doesn't have time to find her next real job, and she's trapped working in Burger King for the next 17 years until Junior graduates and moves out. Or the government comes and takes Junior and puts him in a lab, but they say, hey, that's what we look at. Area 51, and then which, oh. So she can take some time to do the search to find the next real job. If unemployment checks didn't exist, she wouldn't have that option. As an unintended consequence, she may not work for them. You got people that, okay, because I got welfare, you know, yeah, it ain't great living, but I can get a welfare check and sit at home and scrape by, or I can go work 40 hours a week and get just a little bit more money, and let, but then I work it all day long and I keep my best my judge duty. Does anything else come on in the afternoons besides judge duty? Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil. Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer's still on. It's Mari. Mari, is he still on? Yeah, Mari's still on. All of those. <coughs> Sad thing is, if you list that show in order, the judge is your use of this. The looks for it. There's no other reason than that. Get a job. Okay. It's this. Okay. So. People might work less because I can okay, I can collect unemployment checks to buy me more time to look for a job. Because I can sit and collect a welfare check, so I can choose not to work. Because I can collect social security, yeah, though I'm still healthy at age 65, middle fingers in here, I quit. There are how many people who like good because I qualify for my social security check, I ain't gonna work another day in my life, even though they're fully capable of doing it. You don't get as much work because these programs exist. And you get the undesirable behaviors of things like, you know, not so much now, but back in the day, the welfare benefits encourage people to keep having babies. The more babies you have, the more welfare checks you get, the more bigger you get. Uh, Medicare encourages people to potentially overuse health care service. If you cut your finger and you know you go to the hospital, you're gonna have to pay fifty dollars, you can go to the hospital. No. If you cut your finger, you know what ain't gonna cost you a penny? Are you gonna go to the hospital? Yeah. Maybe. Because you know, you know, maybe there's a 1% chance it could be gangrene and fall off. So, well, no, 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 I don't wanna take that risk. I have to go to the hospital. It ain't gonna cost me anything. Especially if I'm already, I don't have a job or any other responsibilities. So yeah, if I got a bunch of free time on my hands, anytime I get a cut or a scrape or something like that, you better believe I'm going to the hospital. I'm calling an ambulance and having a period there. I don't want to drive and be dripping blood on my car and steer wheel and stain of carpet and Unemployment benefits encourage people to stay unemployed longer. So here you go. I did update these slides. We don't have the 2019 numbers because hey, it's only 2018. Correct. I mean, it's only April. <laughs> <laughs> No one needed to share his alcohol with me. Okay, so the poverty line, what it is based on is bare minimum, how much does somebody need to survive? Safety survival. Y'all remember Maslow's hierarchy from your psychology class or from a human resources class? Yeah. Maslow's hierarchy. Five steps. 
you had a survival. Just pretend like I spelled it correctly. You have safety. Then you have the affiliation, feel like you belong, having friends, that kind of stuff. You have achievement, accomplishing things. Then you have uh, self actualization. I've arrived. I mean, I'm fully comfortable in my skin, and I don't give a crap if anybody doesn't like me because I'm okay with that. These are psychology. This is biology. This is what these transfer programs are about. It's about safety and survival. It ain't about making you happy. It ain't about making you feel good. It ain't about accomplishment. It's about making sure that you can survive. Because the government, where does it say you have a right to be happy? Read the Constitution. It ain't there. Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness will let you stay alive so you can pursue happiness, but happiness ain't guaranteed. Right? But what they do is they decide how much money is it going to take for people to have basic safety and survival. I'm talking basic rooting food. Basic food, basic clothing, basic shelter, the basics. A cell phone plane where you get 100 minutes, not unlimited data, right? Yep. What does it take for basic safety and survival? Does this conversation sound slightly familiar? What are we talking about? Minimum wage. It's the same song we dance for minimum wage here. Minimum wage is supposed to be set to where you're working 40 hours a week collecting minimum wage is enough to fill in that box. Safety and survival. You will be able to continue living on the planet. If you want to be happy, work more, get a better paying job, right? But no matter where you work, you're working 40 hours a week, the disco song about I will survive, right? That I'm not going to sing. We're welcome for that. Generally speaking, the poverty line lines up this way. If you are a single person, an individual person, the government says it's going to cost you $12,140 a year to survive. Basic food, clothing, and shelter. A little over $1,000 a month. A little over $250 a week. Assuming nothing happens. Assuming nothing happens. Assuming you're just a nor normal person. Normal survival. $250 a week. About how much do you make a week working minimum wage? Seven and a quarter an hour times 40 hours a week is that's $280 a week. $12,140, that's a little over $1,000, that's a little over $250 a week, right? Minimum wage. The minimum wage is based on a property line. It's, well, it should be based on a property line. We'll come to that. Two people? Two people don't have twice the expenses. They're sharing the same kitchen, sharing the same living room, sharing the same, and if they're a married couple, they're sharing the same bed. If they ain't married, if it's a parent and a kid, well, then they got a separate bedroom or that kind of stuff. And so, primarily, that's extra food and maybe an extra room in the house. So, to go from a one person five household to a two person household, that second person costs an extra, needs an extra $4,300. And then after that, let's say 4,000, 4,000, 4,000, 4,000. Basically, the government, okay, maybe the second person is an adult or a kid. These are kids, right? Unless you have some kind of interesting relationship where you have a multiple adult. Kind of your members of a kind of thing or polyamorous or what, huh? Polyamorous. Yeah, polyamorous. Oh, what was the one that, that, that the girl was on small bill? See, she was just turned out that she got arrested or whatever for being some kind of sex trafficking cult thing, thing, thing. And it was, yeah, it, just, yeah, okay. It's just, so kids, right? <laughs> the government is basically saying it costs a minimum $4,000 a year to raise kids. Minimum. 
four thousand dollars for his kid. So, for any of you fellows, uh, you could be, but, but you know, you're in a divorce or whatever, who gets a kid? It's safe for the mother, right? So, any of you guys that have the plan that you're wanting to make a career being a deadbeat dad? Well, what happened is uh, life support, child support, child support, child support. Dad is responsible for half of the cost of the junior, right? So, Loveline, so the alien that came and visited Loveline that evening, it should, it should be paying for half of the diapers for her alien love child, right? According to the government, we're talking four thousand dollars. So, minimum, he's going to be paying. He should be paying two thousand dollars a year. Minimum. He's not here, but if the government if the government can find him, track him down, and figure out a way to garnish his paycheck from whatever planet that he lives on or works on, right? So, any of y'all that are planning on it, I'm, not, I'm joking there, but yeah, any, child support is going to be a minimum of two thousand dollars a year. Minimum. It starts with that because that's what the government says you got to have. So don't be thinking, well, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, okay, I have a kid, maybe I'll pay $50 here, $50, no, minimum, $2,000 a year. There's a lot of meat on the bones of this slide, this, this table here. So the spend is what has to go to gas costs. Yeah, well, no, the, it's 4,000 for each kid. Mom pays half, dad pays that. He's where dad rather ruthlessly in this day, right? So in that four thousand minimum, well, his dad's got to pay two thousand of it. She's got to pay the other two thousand. That's four thousand. And this is before tax. I mean, after tax, if you, you got to spend four thousand on junior. So you know, after that, beat dad has work and got his paycheck, and all the same thing, did you taking taxes out? Well, then two thousand that has to go to take care of junior. So it's an after tax. It's the actual money that's involved here. Um, was it the average household in America is like three and a half people? So the average poverty line, average household needs to be working off of about twenty-three thousand dollars a year, you know. That's setting stage. Temporary aid for needy families. This is how our old school welfare has evolved. This is what the program is called now. It used to be aid for families with dependent children. A of B I C. I can't remember. I'm missing the word. Aid for families. Something dependent children. Dependent. I can't remember what the I do anyway. This is what, when people say welfare, I, I've been using welfare with a little w, welfare in general. But welfare, if people are talking the welfare program and they're meaning it so with a capital W, and what they're actually talking about is TANF, temporary aid for needy families. That is the welfare program, it, it's TANF. Temporary aid for needy families is the largest cash welfare program in the US. And generally, a family of four, According to that table we just looked at on the last slide, a family four needs $25,000, $25,100 for survival, safety and survival. And if you're making less than $25,100, you qualify. Pretty much just that simple. If you're making less than $25,100, you qualify. So guess what? If those of you that are living on your own, let me just go back slide. For those of you that are living on your own, you ain't sponging off of your parents, you've got your own apartment somewhere, and your parents are disowned you. If you make a less than $12,140, you can apply to get data. So what do they do? We'll get to that. The, uh, and this is just money. The food stamps and SNAP and that's other programs that you also, these people can also qualify for. So you can get a whole lot there. Right? Yes, because food stamps are separate, but of course, they can take, okay, we're giving, you got your paycheck, and then what are you getting food stamps? And okay, fast enough to be get you over the hurdle, well then we're not going to give you any cash on top of that. But, so it's sort of, it ends up being an additive process. 
but you can qualify for food stamps, housing aid, as well as TANF. And there's an interesting number of families you do. So they need cash. TANF use cash. And that's the old school welfare, you get your welfare check, cash. You can take this money, spend it on video games, TVs, you know, then whatever, because they give you cash. Hopefully you're responsible. But the more that we don't trust the responsibility of these people, the more we're giving them the in kind stuff of food stamps, that kind of stuff, and housing aid instead of giving them this. So generally, housing aid, food stamps is gonna come first, and then this. Government doesn't trust people to make decisions. So, for example, a family the family four is supposed to be used, supposed to have a minimum of twenty five thousand one hundred dollars. Well, uh, is somebody only making a sink? They're seven thousand one hundred dollars short. This is called a poverty gap. They're seven thousand one hundred dollars short of the amount of money the government says that they need. So the government programs are going to kick in to try to take care of that seventy-one hundred dollars people need to get to where they need to be. But the government ain't going to say, well, we're going to just write you a check for $7,100 and boom, now you're up to the 25 that you need and have a good day. Because what will happen? Bobby, UVA fan. You know, Bobby should say, okay, I work, 800, I work enough to make $18,000 and the government writes, seven, writes a check for the other $7,100. Well, why am I going to work to make a whole $18,000? Well, I'm not going to work as much. Maybe I want to make twelve thousand this year, and let the government write a check for whatever thirteen thousand dollars. Or maybe I'll just quit working all together and let the government write a check for the full twenty-five thousand one hundred that I need. People would do that, and that's why they have adjusted the rules for collecting welfare. That's why the AFDIC is being too tough because they don't want people like Bobby to be doing that. Well, they don't want. People doing what Bobby's doing. I'm not, let me word that one a little bit better there. So, um, they don't want people playing that game. Of, well, the lesser I work, the bigger my welfare check is, and either way, I'm going to end up with a same amount of money, so I'm going to work less and get more from the government instead of working more and get less from the government. If I'm going to end up with the same amount of money, then why work? I can stay at home and watch Dead Judy. And a TV that I got for the doctor. I don't know where you got to do anyway. I don't know. So, so the worry is that people are going to quit working and try to get that twenty-five thousand dollars check. So TANF benefits are capped at eight thousand dollars. That's the most you can get. So if Bobby decided, well, I'm only going to work enough to make twelve thousand dollars, well, then twelve thousand plus the eight thousand that he could get from the government, that's only going to put into make twenty thousand. Which is five thousand short of what he needs for basic safety and survival for him and his three people living in the house with him. So Bobby's going to have problems, right? So what they do is to try to incentivize Bobby. What they'll do is, well, um, okay, oh, that's the next slide. The way it used to be done is, okay, well, we're going to subtract his wages. Every extra dollar that he makes on his paycheck, that's one less dollar that we're going to pay him on his check. All right. So Bobby, he said, like, you know, work less, get the same amount of money. That, that's a decision. But what the government says is, we want Bobby to be working. We want to reward his effort to be working more to collect less from the government. So what we'll do is for every extra dollar that Bobby makes working, instead of us taking a dollar away from his check, we're only going to take 66 cents away from him. If he earns an extra thousand dollars working, well, his welfare check is only going to be $667 smaller. So by actually working at it, those extra hours, his income is going to be 300 and some odd dollars higher. 
because we want, if it's a straight one-to-one -one replacement, he's going to say, screw it. One sec, he's going to sit there and do the 25000 take away 8000 and then draw that line, and once he gets to that amount of money for the year, he's done. He ain't going to work anymore because there's absolutely no value in it. But in this case, there is value in continuing to work because you will be getting more and more financially ahead because the one check is getting smaller and the slower, slower than the other check is getting bigger. So, do this to encourage Bobby to keep working. Instead of going 25, take away eight is 18, I'm gonna quit working at 18, no. In November, I'm gonna retire for the year, we'll start back in January. But the other thing is, the government has placed some other limits there. First, the most that he can be collecting, TANF, is five years. Five years all at one time, five years in a row, or three months here, six months there, two years there, three months there, spread out over 20 years. Once it adds up to five years, done. The other thing is, while collecting TANF, he has to be involved in some type of employment-related activity, quote unquote, within two years to start collecting benefits. Now, if he's doing three months here, six months there, on and off and on and off, over spread out over 15 years, that one's really not going to kick in. But somebody can Bobby can't just say, well, screw it, I'm going to collect Tana for the next five years. Boom. I'm going to lay around playing video games and pretend like I'm just a little bit around the couch, right? He can't do that. He has to do some type of employment-related activity within a couple of years. So if you go over the time to recover from ailing love children or whatever is going on there, you've got to start employment-related activity. Working, volunteering, going to school, those count. You've got to be doing something. Because if you ain't going forward, the government is saying, if you're not trying to help yourself, why should we help you? And it cuts you off. If it ain't important to you to try to be improving your situation, then it shouldn't be important to us. We're done. That's the same attitude for those of y'all that work in my human resources class when we talk about companies contributing to your 401k. A lot of companies are like, if it ain't important to you to save for your own retirement, well then we're not going to save for your retirement either. Important enough to you that you want to start saving for your retirement or taking some money to help you with that. But if you don't care, you don't care either. Hold a lot. So, by putting these programs in place, it's really the number of people that are collecting TANF has reduced because there's these that you've got to be working or trying to work, and there's a limit to five years total that you can be collecting. Yeah, okay. I've never actually done that, man. But it took the max of about eight thousand dollars a year over five years. That would be forty thousand. That's fine. But it's not going to be. They, but they're not going to look at forty thousand unless you whittle it down. Because if you only qualify this first year to get three thousand dollars, and I can say, "What do you got? Thirty-seven left over the next one." Oh, it's the eight thousand a year going forward. The most you collect would be forty thousand, spread out over five years. What kind of living is that? We will start with this one when we come to class in nine days. Oh my. So, um,